In today's message, Pastor Chad Waller shows us how to understand the Bible. All right, let's go to the basics. This is a Bible. This is our Bible. And we need to know what's in it. And last week we made a commitment that we're no longer going to be intimidated by this word. We're no longer be timid, intimidated by what's written here. And, and many of us have the same testimony that for so long we were so afraid to study it because we didn't think we could understand it. I hear people say it all the time. Pastor, I read the Bible, but I don't get a thing out of it. And so that's what this is about. I, I want to remind you of the statistic I gave you. Just listen to this. Every month, more than half a million Americans, over 500,000 Americans, search for the phrase Bible study how-to on YouTube. Half a million people, more. Pardon me, Andy, mute me for a second. I just fixing to be. More than half a million people. Well, I didn't want to. <laughs> Ain't nobody here but us, right, Summer? So we good, we good. We good. More than half a million people, Americans, are looking for how to study the Bible. I, I don't even know how to know, I don't even know how to find out how many Christians don't actually study the Bible. I know, I, I've talked to people and they say, Pastor, I read the Word every day, but I'm not sure I'm getting anything out of it. And so this is why it is important to me. The Bible is still the most widely distributed and best-selling book of all times. Still. Yet it is intimidating for people to read and understand. And so we want to, um, if it's intimidated to, to read and understand, you can only imagine when people try to live by it. And if you misinterpret things and try to live by those, that's how we come up with cults and religions that are so far off from what the word really says. And people come up with harsh beliefs and understandings that aren't even in the word. And I don't know how many times you hear this, but I'll hear people say, well, you know, the Bible says. And I'm like, the Bible nowhere says what you just said, sir. But, but if, you, if you don't know, then you don't know. Melinda and I have this new thing. We're saying you can't see what you can't see. And until you see it. You won't even know. You you, if, you, if you can't see it, you can't see it. How many of you get mad sometimes because somebody just can't see something? Yeah. And you're like, it's right there in front of you. And they're like, I'd see it if I could. I'm trying. I'm a looking. And, and it's the same way with the word. If you don't know it, you don't know it. But you can know it. And you can take the time to learn how to. So that's what we're doing through this time together in these next few weeks is learning that the Bible can cause us to live in freedom, not bondage. And that the true understanding and revelation of the Bible should cause us to live full of joy, live a life that is abundant. But misunderstanding the word will lead you into religious bondage. Yeah. And I've seen people who are, are, are so full of the word, supposedly, yet they're in religious bondage. Yeah. That's not the word of the Lord. Jesus one day looked at folks and said, you're always learning, but you never come to the knowledge of the truth. The Pharisees knew the scriptures better than anybody. And yet they did not recognize Jesus, who was the truth, the way and the life. Right. So this is why it's important. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2.15. We're going to start there today. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. I don't know if this is a familiar passage for you, but it's one that I learned as a kid. Do your best. You probably have heard it. This is just the version I use. You probably have heard it. Study to show yourself approved, right? Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a work, worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So um, when, when one of the most complaints uh, or largest complaints I hear from people is I don't know how to understand the Bible, and one of the most Google things is uh, Christian faith or how to study the Bible, then we see that people don't really understand how to, and they don't understand how to learn how, what is in there and how it applies to their life. It is possible to study the Word, and it's possible to find help for your life. Uh, but listen to me, help is not found just by careful or, or, or casual observation of Scripture. Help is not a Facebook post. Yeah. Right. Hope and change is not you found a scripture and you posted it and you're hoping everybody sees how spiritual you are because you post good scriptures. 
that won't, that won't change anybody. I'm not, say, I'm not against that. I love seeing Facebook filled with scriptures. But listen, just because you can quote something doesn't mean you can live something. And, I, and I'll tell you this, just because you can teach something. Teaching is a gift. I've seen, I've seen many people teach the Bible and they mean it's snakes. You can teach on love, but do you love? There's a big difference. You can have head knowledge about something and be able to teach something. I mean, all of us, come on, y'all ain't nobody here but us. We just fam. And y'all all have been around somebody that claims that they're a Christian or they claim they know the word. And they can shove the word down people's throats, but they can't live a life that reflects the word. And they draw harsh lines and they're mean and critical. And, 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 and I like to say it this way. They just ain't Christing right. Because if you're Christing, if you're allowing Christ to live through you. And he said to us, if you abide in me. And my words abide in you. Then you'll know the truth. You can't just study the Bible and say, I got all the truth I need. No, you have to be in him and him in you, the word in you, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And when that happens, all of a sudden, something starts happening. The word comes alive in you. Newman was sharing with me this morning. He came in so excited. He was about to to explode. And he was sharing one of our members. He goes into the prisons weekly on a weekly basis to preach the gospel And he said, God woke me up last night just bringing me new revelation. And and it's so beautiful. And it it applies to this scripture. Because you you can know scripture and memorize it. But until you know the truth of who you are in Christ. And who Christ is in you. That's what Jesus said. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. So that's about position. As long as you believe you are a slave begging God for something, you'll never understand truth. That's right. yep. As long as you are trying to be saved, you'll never understand truth. As long as you are trying to please God. There's such a trap of trying to please God. When you are always hoping to please someone, you live in constant fear that you will displease them. God is so in love with you, and he's... Mm. Come on. Before Jesus was born, the angels declared, pleased in men to dwell. Yeah. <laughs> it was his plan from the beginning. And I will be their God, and I will tabernacle among them. <laughs> is that the sign for tabernacle? <laughs> oh, God, socialize. I will socialize among them. He wants to abide in us and us in him. He said, then you'll know the truth. And then what did he say? The truth will set you free. So listen, the casual reader of the scripture seldom finds in it deep truths. The casual reader seldom finds deep truths. It's the inquirer, the seeker, the one who says things, the one who digs for things, the one who looks for things. So I want to encourage us to stop being intimidated by the scriptures that God sent us. God sent us a love letter. Why would you be intimidated by the love letter? God gave you a manual. Why be intimidated by it? I wonder if any of you are like me. When we get a new product at the house, we got a new uh, product for Christmas. A hot pot. Am I saying it right? Hot shot. Instapot. Instapot. Thank you. Instapot. Hot pot. (laughs) That's, That's a whole nother thing. We got an Instapot for Christmas. And I don't know if any of you are like me, but when I get something, I take it out of the box and I just figure out how to do it, right? Anybody? Some of y'all want to look at manuals, right? I'm like, just plug it in and figure it out, right? It's got a button on it. I am a man, full-blooded man. I, 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 it's got a button that says, here, press, press. Melinda said, somebody got really burned with one of those things. You got to be careful. And I said, oh, this thing could hurt you. And I backed up. I want you to know I read all the instructions from cover to cover I sat down with that thing. It was hard because I didn't want to do it. 
I'm exposing myself to y'all to say it's easy to just live rejoicing, saying you saved and loving on Jesus. But inside of this are instructions for your life. And this reveals the character and nature of God. And that is why it's so important. We don't need to be intimidated by it. And um, we, above, above all, we remember that we know the author of this book. Come on, if somebody writes you something and you say, I don't understand this. If you write me a letter and I don't understand it, I'm not going to go to somebody else and say, explain this letter to me. I'm going to come to you and say, can you tell me what you meant? You said this, but I don't understand. And you know the author of this letter. We just sang to him, Holy Spirit. You, the, 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 the school, Bible school definition, when they ask you in Bible school, who wrote the Bible? The way we're supposed to respond is Holy Spirit inspired men of old to write down the ancient scriptures. Holy Spirit wrote this. He spoke through men's hearts. Don't bind all that. Well, men have perverted it. Whatever. It's the best I got. You got a better one? I mean, some good hearted folks worked really hard. I use the ESV. Some really good people worked really hard to take the ancient manuscripts from Greek and Hebrew and Chaldean and worked hard, long, long, hard hours to give us the best they got. Don't listen to all that crapola about, well, man interpreted it his way. I mean, if you're so smart, go get the Greek and Hebrew and read it. But let me tell you something. I was on a plane one time to Russia. And uh, I was sitting by someone, and, and uh, I don't know how in the world, well, he and his wife were beside me. And I don't know how in the world I noticed, but I looked over and I thought, he is reading a Greek Bible. I mean, he's reading the Greek. I mean, it's just a Greek New Testament. He's reading a Greek New Testament. And I, I kept thinking, I, I want to ask him something. And finally, I turned and I said, um, you're reading a Greek New Testament, right? Yes. I said, are you a Bible scholar? He said, yes. I said, oh, praise God, that means you're a believer. He said, no. And I said, I, how does? How does do this? And he said, I'm a Greek scholar. I teach Greek. So I like to read Paul's epistles in the Greek. And I like to read the New Testament in the Greek. But I don't believe any of it. And, and in that moment, I thought, all the people I know that work so hard to learn all the Greek words... And you think the Greek is going to get you closer to God? Come on. If you're not abiding in Jesus and his words are not abiding in you, you can read in Greek and not get a thing. It'll all be Greek to you. That was, that was a bad. Y'all are so sweet to, to laugh at my bad jokes. Thank you. So Holy Spirit, this precious spirit that God said he would send us and Jesus said, I'm going to send you. He was promised to be a comforter and a guide. And what did Jesus say he'll guide you into? All truth. Come on. He wants to guide us into truth. He wants to teach us. Holy Spirit is sent to be our guide. And Jesus promised that he would lead us and guide us in all truth. And if we let him, he will. So I want to look at this. I want to look at some simple rules. This is a very practical message. These weeks will be, I mean, I, if you don't shout a lot, that's fine. I'm okay. But boy, if you get some of this, it'll show make me plenty happy. I want to look at some simple rules that I use for Bible study. Number one, pray. Because we know Holy Spirit, we just pray and we ask. Holy Spirit, help me. You are remiss if you start studying the Bible trying to do it on your own. So before you pray, Holy Spirit, I'm about to read the word. I'm asking that you give me revelation. You are sent to lead and guide me into all truth. Thank you. I mean, you ain't got to pray that prayer. Pray whatever you want. Your prayer can be, Holy Spirit, help. I'm fit to read. That's fine. He'll hear you. I mean, you don't have to make it religious. You don't have to make it anything. But ask him. Ask him. Now, I, I, I've been doing this for years, so I don't always have a formal prayer. But sometimes when I start reading and I don't understand something, I'll say, Holy Spirit, what does that mean? Help me here. What does that mean? What's that all about? So number one is simply ask Holy Spirit for help by prayer. And number two is consistency. It's, it's simple this. It's a good habit to have. Reading the scripture is a good habit to have. Yeah. Abiding. You're going to abide in the word a lot easier if you're reading it. <laughs> you're going to abide in it a lot easier if you're meditating on it, if you're memorizing scripture. So just consistency in doing it. And then the next thing is ask some questions. Let me just show you. I don't know if any of y'all remember in English, there was a thing we were taught, the five W's and an H. Y'all remember that? Yep. 
Anybody remember that? So it, it, when you're doing that, you're just asking who, what, what when, 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 where, where, ooh, whim, <laughs> where, and why, right? Yep. And then how. how. You, those are amazing questions to ask when you're studying the Bible. You know, I was amazed when, when I first started studying the Bible, probably about 1991. I was amazed when I heard this statement in, in, in learning how to study the Bible. Maybe you all already know this. But the scripture we just read from Timothy was taken out of the middle of a letter. And you're probably going to understand the letter a lot better if you read the whole thing. And when you just take one scripture, you might not even understand what's going on. You can so misinterpret somebody's letter when you take one scripture. You find a letter that, that somebody in here wrote me and, Pastor, we had a blast with you last night. <gasps> Pastor's out having a blast with some folks. <laughs> well, what was the context of the letter? And that is how so many people get in trouble because they don't ask these simple questions. Who was writing it? What was written? When did they write it? Where were they at? Why did they write it? How was it received? Or what was going on? All these simple questions. When I started asking those questions, the words started coming alive to me. Why did he say this? Why did he say this? To whom was he writing? What was their relationship? What was going on in this time period? If you do not understand and conceptualize the time period that things were written in the scripture, you will completely misinterpret scripture. Yeah. Completely. If you don't understand what was going on. So you ask questions. Five W's and H or whatever questions you want to ask. Just ask yourself questions. Why? Why is this here? Number, uh, the next one, I'm not numbered here. Watch for key words and phrases. This will better help you understand what you're reading. When I'm reading, I just look for things that pop out. You've heard people say something just stands out to you. Listen, y'all, I've been studying the scriptures, and I don't know if y'all know, but there's no new ones in this, right? And yet I'll read something, I'll go, I've never read that before. And I'll have markings all around it, so I know I did read it, but all of a sudden it just pops out because it's what you need for that day. I'm so excited that later in the year we're doing the book of Proverbs. We're going to do a, a study on wisdom, and I'm going to teach you how in that uh, month how to take one proverb a day and find what stands out to you. You can do that all your life and read the same Proverbs because there's one for every day, you know, 31, so you got an extra one on some months, but most months you got covered, right? And you can read a proverb that goes with that day. Help me, what's the day of today? 14th? 13th. 13th. You could read today, you could read Proverbs 13, and I don't care how many months you do that, every month a different scripture is going to stand out to you on the 13th. It's because it's what you're going through at the time. You know, all you women, you know, you didn't notice how many women were pregnant until you got pregnant, and then everybody's pregnant, right? <laughs> It's the whole thing because you now see it, everybody, everybody, the whole world's pregnant, right? When it was always going on, it's not a new thing. And in the scriptures, in the, Jesus, in the scriptures, you will always find what you need for that day. Holy Spirit is faithful to do that. So watch for key phrases and, and uh, key words. Uh, the, the, the next one is context. I, when I first taught this, I was... Uh, teaching in a Bible school, <laughs> and I developed this whole curriculum on how to study the Bible, and, and number one, I, I mean, I would harp in class, I would harp, in, and I would say, context is king, context is king, everybody say that, context is king, all right, so I mean, I taught, we, every class we talked about that, because I'm just telling you, the number one thing, if I could teach you to do anything to help you not misinterpret scripture, is find out the context, Find out what is being said. Read the whole letter. Read the whole book. Find out what's going on. You know, ask those questions. Context is king. So on the test, the first, I'm, I'm telling you, we talked about this again and again. The first question on the test, college level kids, blank is king. A little K because Jesus is king, right? But, but we, I want you to know, I had people put in this. I gave them points for it. They would say Jesus is king. 
And I can't get I can't get on to him for that. I would say you're wrong in this context of this class because context is what you're supposed to put. But I'm going to give you points because I ain't ever marking off for putting Jesus. Right. All right. I had people put Elvis is king. I'm like. You just failed this whole class because I don't even know if you saved. <laughs> Why am I telling you that story? Because I want you to remember that context, context. It is so important that you understand the context with which something is being spoken, something's being taught, because when you do, scriptures will come alive to you. Next is observation, what is being said, and then application, what does it mean for me and how do I apply it to my life? So context, observation, just what is being said, what do I observe here? Ask yourself questions, what do I observe in this passage, and then how do I apply this passage to my life? So So in that simple thing, you have prayer, consistency, ask questions, watch for key words and phrases, context, observation and application. Now, we're going to spend the next two weeks. I I went over pretty quickly the observation and application because we're going to spend the next two weeks looking at observation and interpretation of the scripture and application, how we work to make sure we're applying it correctly to our lives. But for for the rest of the day, I just want to do this simple acrostic that is... um, Uh, that we use around here for grow groups. If you don't know, grow groups are groups that get together for for a small community to do life together. And the simple understanding is don't just go through life, grow through life. And you need people in your life that are helping you grow and helping you move forward. And so um, um, there's a simple acrostic that we use for uh, for, um, studying the Bible. And anybody, say anybody, anybody can do this. So you see that right there? S-O-A-P. Everybody needs some spiritual soap, don't you? (laughs) Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Everybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Kids can do this. My my grandkids can do this. It's that simple. Um, You observe the Scripture, or you read the Scripture, you observe it together, and this is a, a, a way you do this in a small group. So we're in a group. Uh, my Thursday night group does this. We read some scripture. We observe it together. We ask ourselves, how does this apply to our lives? How do we live this out? Listen, when we first planted this church, one of the things that was so big on my heart was we're not just going to sit around learning more word and word and word and word and word. We're going to find out how does this apply to my life? And, and when we first started, I gave the people permission um, we don't do it so much anymore, but you could. And I gave him permission that if I'm teaching something and it makes no sense and you don't even see how to apply it to your life, I said, somebody, please say, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? Because if, if it's not applicable, if it's not authentic, if it's not real, I mean, really, it's not like some of it, we can't find something else to do on a Sunday. And if we're going to come here, we should be getting stuff that applies to our life that is helping us grow and helping us become what God has called us to be. So scripture, observation, application and prayer. All right. So let's do this together just as an exercise. We've got a few minutes here to do this. Let's dig into the scripture we, we read in Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 5. Let's read that scripture again. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So what do we observe here? Let's just, if you've got your Bible with you and you've got the beginning of the, that chapter, turn to it and somebody look and tell me, who wrote this? Now, somebody's going to say, well, Timothy wrote it. It's a book, book Timothy, but be careful. But who wrote it? Paul. So the who is Paul. Paul wrote it. Okay. Who do you write it to? We assume that, but in the beginning, do you see who it is? To to Timothy. Okay. So he wrote it to Timothy. What what do you see anything about Timothy? My beloved child. My beloved child. Was anybody else's Bible say anything? So is Timothy Paul's son? But it says son. So do any of them say in the faith or add anything? Or Does anybody see why, why do you say he's not his son? Maybe he could be or is he or not or I don't know. 
I, I'm not, I don't know. I'm asking you. You're looking, right? <laughs> well, I didn't expect to have to work when I came to church. <laughs> well, you'll be okay. Just settle down. You'll be okay. Look, either way, either okay, place. What do you? He says, my child in the faith. My child in the faith. First Timothy chapter one in the beginning says, Timothy, my child in the faith. So we see that Paul is uh, equating that he is a spiritual father to Timothy. There are other scriptures. If we had time and we read the whole thing, we will find that Paul actually led his mother Lois and grandmother Eunice and Lois. Uh, I forget which one is which, but. His mother and grandmother. And they have raised Timothy to know the scriptures. It says from a child he had been taught the scripture. I only know that because I read the whole letter. Okay. So it's important that we understand. Now we're finding out. We observe here that that Paul wrote to Timothy. His beloved son in the faith. Because he's trying to do what? What would you assume as you read this. That he's trying to do. He's trying to give him encouragement instruction he's teaching him and so he actually says here now this letter is to Timothy it says Timothy do your best study to show yourself approved do your best what what do other versions say right there read that first in in, in where we just read the scripture second Timothy what does it say mine says do your best work hard study study to show yourself approved so study work hard show your uh, uh, prepare, all these things. Let's look at um, what was going on at the time. Does anybody have at the beginning of your Bible anything that says what was going on? Do you see that there? For time's sake, we won't dig into it, but if you were going to take the time right now, you'd read any beginning parts of 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy to see what's going on. You could look up the time period. Listen, let me tell you something. Back in the day when Melinda and I first got married, when we went to study the Bible, we would have 15 books out on the table and, and books this thick looking through concordances to find something. Does anybody remember those days, right? You don't have to do a bit of that. I'm going to give you a secret. Bible Hub, you're welcome. Bible Hub, B-I-B-L-E-H-U-B, Bible Hub. Some people use Bible Gateway. I love Bible Hub. Let me tell you something. Every concordance, every, uh, every um, 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 commentary, every, every Greek, Hebrew, every version of the Bible. I mean, it is all there at a click, click, click. When I used to, sometimes I still get out the books because I just want to smell pages, but... <laughs> But I'm telling you, on a daily basis, Bible Hub is where I be hanging out. Because you can click to read the Greek, you can click to read the Hebrew, you can click to see commentary. You're gonna, um, I, let me urge you to be careful about commentary. Can I just urge you? Unless you know who the commentary is. Because what is a commentary? It's another man's comments on the scripture. And if you don't know what that man's beliefs are, you can get messed up in a heap hurry, Okay. So be careful if you're going to read commentary. I, I would strongly suggest that commentary, no matter who it is, you may have a teacher that you love on, on TV. You love to watch them and love to listen to them. But please, 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 I'm just a word of caution. Let commentaries be the last place you go, not the first. Because if not, you become a parrot of somebody else's beliefs and you have few of your own. I'm going to be honest with you, and this may sting a bit. I get so tired of people telling me what Joyce Meyer says. Now, I love Joyce. I, I get that. I love T.D. Jakes. But when you, all you can do is tell me what they teach, I'm like, and what do you believe? And what Jesus said to P Peter, who do you say that I am? And I'm just telling you, because Joyce ain't coming to your house when you're having troubles. And trouble, 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 trouble. It will come, and Joyce ain't coming. When people say, I stay home, I, I, I do church on TV, I'm like, call that TV. Call Stephen Furtick when you're going through something. Hello? I'm just being honest, y'all. That commentary might help you, but please, please make sure you know what you see the scriptures say. You have Holy Spirit inside of you. So when you start studying, do that, please. So he says to Timothy, so I would keep going through the questions. What do I see here? What am I observing? What am I hearing? And, and the next thing I would do is start looking to find anything I could about it. 
researching anything I can find about it. But then for me, I just look. So he says, do your best, be diligent, study all these different say. So what is the word? I went and looked it up. The, the Greek word for be diligent there is spadezo, properly to be swift, to go fast, to be speedy. Uh, figuratively to move speedily, speedily and showing full diligence, fully applying oneself, acting fervently, speedy commitment to accomplish all that God assigns through faith, his inbirth persuasion. That's what this means. And I see, so all of a sudden, I've, I've always heard it all my life. I read it in the King James and New King James. Study, study. That, that didn't really speak to me of speedy. And then and the one I use says, do your best, which sounds like, I oh, just do your best. Really, that's how it came across to me. But when I saw the Greek word, it's be swift. Like, use full diligence. Get after it. Get her done. Do something. Get in it, boy. Go. Go get it. I mean, that's what I'm hearing Paul say to Timothy. Come on, don't be lazy in this. Take your time. Do this. Go after this thing. Why? He says, because you need to be able to rightly handle. A worker has not need to be ashamed. Why would someone be ashamed? That's the question that came to me as I'm studying this. Why would someone need to be ashamed? Why would you ever be ashamed when it came to the word? Yeah, because you don't know. You say the wrong thing. You quote a scripture wrong. You say, remember when Noah led the children out of Exodus? Uh, and you're trying to preach it good and everybody like, Noah? I don't I think he was on the ark with Eve, you know? Right? So he says, rightly handle. Interesting, rightly handle. Ortho meo is the Greek word. And ortho, like orthopedic, we think of uh, somebody that cuts, and it means to cut straight. I'm going to cut you straight now. You need to be somebody who can cut straight the word, who gets it straight, who doesn't complicate it. Who, who can just cut straight. I'm going to cut. Don't you do. I don't know about y'all. But I love people who can cut straight. Like I just got. Because I get backstory. I get lost in sometimes. And I'm like. Now what, what was. It? And sometimes I'll say. If you don't know me well. Sometimes I say. Can you give me a noun. So I can get back on track. Because I'm lost. Who we even talking about. Isn't it nice. When somebody can cut straight the word. And say. This is what it says. Yeah. All right. All right. You know. One of the things we do in counseling. Is we let the word convict people. I don't try to convict anybody of anything. And they'll say, Pastor, are you saying, no, no, I'm not saying, read this. And I also slide my Bible across the table and say, read that. What does it say? And they'll say, blah, blah, blah. And I'll say, okay, now that's not me. That's the Bible. Because if you're going to fight with somebody, it's going to be with Holy Spirit, Jesus, Father God, and his word. It ain't me because I didn't write it. Pastor, I can do what I want. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Read that to me. And what does it say? I'm just going to cut straight. Here's what it says. Okay, so you cut straight, rightly divide, to correctly apportion. So then next, how do we apply this to our lives? And I am, I promise you, I'm, I'm trying to land this plane right here. We apply it to our lives. How do I, so what I see concerning 2 Timothy 2.15 here is that I need to be quick and diligent. Sometimes after I study the Greek words and after I look and see things, I just paraphrase my own version that helps me understand. That, you know, that's what a paraphrase is. The Message Bible, the Passion Translation, they're, ta- they're not complete interpretations word for word. They're paraphrases. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, be careful that paraphrases aren't direct interpretations. And sometimes have man's flavor. Eugene Peterson, who did the Message Bible, it has a lot of his flavor and his theology in it. And sometimes I disagree with it when I'm reading it. And sometimes it just reads funny. I know a lot of people love it, but there are times I read and I'm like, that just is weird. But it's just because that's the way he wanted to say it. And I do the same thing. I take the scriptures and I don't, I, don't, I don't ever plan to write a Bible. I'm just writing it for me. So as I wrote it out, here's what I saw. I need to be quick and diligent, fully applying myself with fervency to know the word of God and to correctly apportion it to my life first and be diligent about living it to my fullest ability. And I need to cut straight as I share the word with others. Amen. Now that's what I got out of the scripture. That, that's, so then what I look at is how can I apply this to my life? So here, now I've got this thing that I need to work on. Okay, Lord, am I being diligent? Am I being lazy at times? 
Do I get tired? Do I oh, tell me how? I, so then I start asking those questions. All right. Listen to the Passion Translation of 2 Timothy 2.15. And I'm closing with this. Always be eager to present yourself before God as a perfect and mature minister without shame as one who correctly explains the word of God. Paul teaching his son in the faith because his son in the faith was pastoring churches. And he says, I want you to do your work. Be diligent. Be swift to go after this so that when you stand to preach, you give it to him straight, son. Amen. 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 Uh, we, we are going to continue in these weeks. I'm praying for you that we deal a blow to any fear about learning his word. So I just want to pray over you, okay? And then we're going to be dismissed. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you wrote your word. Thank you for John 1, that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the, or the word was God, and nothing was created without the word. And you gave us this living epistle. You gave us your word, Jesus, to come live inside of us so that the rhema could be heard inside of us as the logos, the written word, is explained to us. And we are grateful for what you're doing. I pray this week as people dare, dare to open the Bible and start studying. I pray for those who have had fear of doing it. Those who felt like they couldn't do it. I pray, Father, as we start digging into your word, that your Holy Spirit will unveil truths to us, will reveal life to us, and, and you will bring us into deeper understandings of who you are and who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us at VC2, where we are real people meeting real needs with the reality of Christ. If you haven't already, subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content. Also, check us out on Instagram and Facebook as VC2 Online.